let's tackle the light and tabletop tripod. So right, in cool. your case, you're going to have um, it. And if you took it out, it might not be there anymore. But yes, that tripod. And if you spread, you're not going to want to connect it to the ring light, though. Okay. Spread it out completely. Uh, you're definitely going to want the legs as wide as possible when you put it you know, on your desk because yep. it's going to get a little wild here. So the oh, other right. thing in that same compartment that's up at the top of the case is a magic arm, right? And I can go, yep, that's the one. So if you unscrew the, uh, the, the thumb screw there on the side, everything will loosen up, right? The middle joint and the joints at the end. So essentially you want to get it in position and then crank that down. Now, what I've been telling people, because that can be a little bit weird to figure out and everything, the magic arm, if you haven't used them before, is like, don't be afraid to take that with you when you sit down to watch TV tonight, kind of loosen it, tighten it, figure out how it works, figure out what you need to do to get it to do what you want. So... Um, to start though, the easiest way to go is to just do it straight up and down, right? Yep. I got that. Yep. Yeah. That's exactly the way I got it. So straight up and down is depending on the height of your monitor going to be either about the right height or a little too high. So, and this is why I'm saying you got to mess with it a little and figure it out. If yep, you yep. want it lower, you still want everything kind of centered over the tripod right? Yep. Um, but uh, kind of like that. So like a lower setup for this tripod looks kind of like this, right? Like oh, everything's cool. still centered over the tripod. Yeah, I like that. That's, but, that's what I was looking for. But you get the adjustability to kind of have whatever height you need. So it's a, it takes a little getting used to, but it does make that setup somewhat more universal. So now with this um, this plate and screw, that mm -hmm. is what you can screw into the ring light. Okay. <clears throat> and you already got the ring light plugged in. So essentially that is your lighting. Now, some of the notes just from other people using the system, the ring light draws a fair amount of power. You were on a Mac, right? Yes, sir. So we haven't had any issues really with the Mac other than the really new laptops only have one USB port um, yep. or even just a USB-C. Um, but um, they, they, yeah, this is a spot where we really haven't had any issues. So um, you should be fine. But how many USB ports do you have on your laptop? Um, I'm using your uh, USB connector right. since everything's going to go to my right anyway. So okay. it'll be easier for me to use that than, but I have uh, two USB ports on there. So okay. but I'm going to use so, the hub because everything's going to go to the right of me anyway. Right. The only reason you wouldn't be able to do that is once we get everything plugged in and fired up, it might be too much for your computer. Your computer might tell you that you're drawing too much power through that port in which case I recommend you switch the light to the other side of the computer because that's okay. one of the biggest draws. Okay, so your lights are set. The next thing you can do is take, there should be a little ball head um, in that case that would have been up in the same space as the tripod and the magic arm. And it's got a, a grub screw uh, set into the bottom of it, that guy right there. Yep. And so you can screw that, that ball head right into the middle of the ring light. So when I put this camera onto the ring light, I got to spin it around inside the ring to get this thing to sit down on it? Yes. Yeah, exactly. So this is the setup I use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got gotcha. you. Right. You see it? So, and then like, it's the same, it's behind my, uh, Tri or my monitor, but I've got the same little tripod and it just sits up on top there. I pitch mine off to the side a little. You can see that I actually have my ring light at a little bit of an angle and then I have the camera kind of live 
sort of on this side of the ring light and that way I can fold out my screen. That's a little advanced. You don't have to do it for this one, but that's something you could work on for future um, setups, right? And as you start to really nail it down. So you'll have a micro uh, USB cord, which will plug into the camera on, if you're facing it, yeah, yours is white. Um, if you're facing the camera, it's going to be on your yep. left side. You have the, yeah, the little door yep, that you can open up. Yeah, the next thing we can do, just so you get a look at the camera and everything, is there's another piece, and it was a, uh, it was a little power pack, USB, right, yeah, with that little block on it that would have been underneath the yep. ring light. So yep. the the obviously one side goes in the USB, the other side goes in the bottom of the camera. There should be a little door open on the battery door, yep, uh, like a little it. flap that I, I open before I send them out, but sometimes it gets closed. So let me, let me talk you through it. So it, they, they made it much more complicated than it used to be. But uh, halfway, well, just off the, your main screen, it's going to say, choose your operating system. It should be, it should have auto-populated to Mac. And then you're going to want to go all the way to the bottom, which is ridiculous, yeah, hey, yeah, but they put so it true. way at the bottom. Yeah. All the way to the right, the fourth item down is the EOS M50, which is the one you want. And I got to close then, Chrome because it's telling me I have to close Chrome in order for it to work. What, what is telling you you have to close Chrome? Uh, Zoom must be closed. To, so I'm going to leave the meeting oh, in order to see because it has some sort of yeah, integration. Yeah, yeah. Hang on, so. hang on a second though. Let's make sure okay. you're putting installing the right one. So this is where it gets weird, right? Um, they put out uh, a a program called EOS Utility. You don't want that. What you do want is the EOS Webcam Utility Beta, which is. That's Yep. Dated for 527. It's a real That's the one file. I downloaded. Yep. All right, cool. Yeah. So we've had that happen where you know the naming convention is just not terribly original. So people yeah, have download the... the wrong one. Yeah. So yes, what you're gonna have to do is install that. You will have to restart your computer. You do have to get out of Zoom and then just hop back in this meeting. It should be this simple if everything went well. If you go and you mouse over your Zoom window and you have the little video camera and you click the carrot to the right of the video camera, under select a camera, you should have your webcam. It's there, the US webcam utility beta. There it is, okay. So if you hit that, it'll give you a splash screen like the one you saw when mine went offline for a moment. We only have one piece left. So we've had to go, get a little weird with some of your stuff to get it going. But yep. we have one piece left, which is the Yeti mic. Yes. Which is a pretty simple one. Uh, you just plug in the Yeti mic, plug it in your computer. It's plug and play. But I'm going to caution you to one thing. Your computer, when you plug it in, may switch everything over to the Yeti. So... Uh, you know, it's good that you have it as your mic. That's, of course, what you want. But um, you may not expect to have it become your default speaker, which you can just plug in the headphones and then, it, you know, it works fine. Um, but we've had people just like be like, oh, no, all of a sudden I can't hear you. So that's why I try to Preface and that's it. just a set. That's just going into the Mac yeah. settings and changing it, right? Right, or the Zoom settings. But like people freak out sometimes when they plug it in, and all of a sudden they can't hear us, and it's because right. the audio is running through the the Yeti oh. itself. Yeah. The other thing to um, keep in mind is the Yeti when it's solid blue, or not blue. <laughs> Yours is blue. Um, yeah, mine is blue. Solid red That's a light. 
that means it's accepting audio. When the yep. light is blinking, that means it's muted, right? So nobody can hear you. So <clears throat> if it's just you, you want the pattern to be on, that's the cardioid. It looks like a little upside down heart. Yep. And then I usually have my gain all the way down or almost all the way down. Right on. That's I got. And, the um, and then the other things to note about the Yeti mic, I don't know how familiar you are with them, but a lot of people will talk into the top of the mic like this. That's not how these work. What's actually accepting your audio is right here on the mic, like right above the blue logo. So you can you can hear the difference between that and like if I were to try to use it like a traditional mic. So can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yeah. Nice. It's all about getting it set up right. Like mine's just out of frame, but it's about six inches maybe even four inches from my mouth when I'm speaking on a Zoom call like this. So it's about just making a little room in front of you and doing that kind of thing. How does it sound from here? It doesn't sound as good from there. You could probably ramp up gain a little, but you're going to lose some of your audio quality. But the, yeah, I mean, the, the mic sounds pretty good. And if you tilt it up toward you a little, like mine, I pitch back just a touch like that. Oh, you pitch it back. Yeah. So that, like, it's really all about trying to talk into this space. What I recommend is to put that camera behind your computer and ah. have it set up right above where your webcam is. Yep. Even if you block some of the ring light, like about a third of my ring lights blocked. Like, it, it works well enough. It throws enough light to... Um, you know, if I'm not wearing, I got a hat, enough room to do that. But, I can definitely tuck it behind here now. And then, and then the other thing is, I shrink down my Zoom talking heads as small as they'll go, and then tuck them right up underneath where the camera is. So even if you didn't have the your your vid kit like right above your Zoom camera, like if it were, you know, we'll call it stage left, you could you could tuck your uh, video, you know, your little talking head videos up into that corner of your monitor and have a pretty, a, you know, a pretty close approximation to looking right into the camera. And that's what I really want. You know, yeah. the only thing I got to figure out is getting this power adapter to work. Yep. Right? Because if I do anything longer than 30 minutes or 40 minutes, I'm screwed, right? Well, if you're doing streaming like this, you get about an hour and a half to two hours. So you can Auto do a battery? Zoom. Yeah, on the battery. Okay. So you can do a you know a Zoom meeting or two, but yeah, if it's if it's more than that, it can be a problem. So there's really only three pieces, right? You got the yeah. light, the camera, and the mic. And uh, as you kind of play with it a little, a little, if you notice things like your audio being out of sync, we have some treatments for that in the Creator Network. If you notice things like your lighting's not quite right. We have some treatments for that in the Creator Network. And um, if uh, your power adapter is broken, I will get you another one. Excellent, right, man. Okay. Thanks again. We'll have fun, and I'll see you soon. All right. Have a good All one. Right. Thanks, Thanks. Yeah.